Hello, my name is Beth McGill, and today I will be leading you through an exploration of body part leading, initiations, guidances, and the idea of a tombe. So to get started, let's uh, come to standing in stillness and take a few breaths. And bring your attention to your right hand and let your right hand lead your arm through the space. Let it lead around, maybe snaking through the space, up and down and around and curving. And maybe it can lead you into a rotation one direction or a turn in the other direction so that you have a real sense of of it drawing you, of it having a mind of its own and bringing the rest of your body along. And now the left hand. Let the left hand move through the space and, and ask your arm to follow along as if it has a mind of its own, carving and sweeping and snaking and diving and reaching and circling and maybe carving around to turn or arcing around to flex so that we really have a sense that the hand is leading this movement. And now let's play with the right elbow, the right elbow leading you to, to walk maybe a few steps in one direction or leading you to turn around or leading you to carve into the space. It could lead you down to the floor, lead you up into the air. And then the left elbow leading around. Again, taking it easy to start, just letting the body explore what is available what you like about leading with the elbow, if this feels familiar or foreign. Beautiful. And then let's play with uh, the feet. <laughs> what about the right foot? If the right foot leads through the space and how can that manipulate the rest of your body? And it helps if you create a sense of free flow through the rest of your body. It will encourage a sequential uh, successive action. And so if we lead with the toe and then we let the rest of the body respond and react. And now the other foot, the other toe, you could also play with the heel leading on this foot. Just how, how would that work for you in your space? You might notice that there's a, a deep rotational element as we are leading with the foot or the hand, the fingertips or the toe tips. And as we continue to explore, let's play with leading with the head. Now the head is a more central part of the body, so you'll notice, first of all, that it takes you off of the vertical and gives you a little bit of a roller coaster ride as we lead with the head. We lead with the head throughout the space. And then what if we lead with the pelvis through the space? And we lead with the pelvis reaching around and curving and arcing. And the rest of the body responds in any way that it sees fit. Beautiful patient explorations of what's available. And next we'll combine these. So if I want to initiate with peripheral body parts, peripheral body parts being my, my hands or my feet and how that organizes uh, the space what does that feel like to move with the periphery of your body leading and the core sort of chasing after it, the central body chasing after these peripheral body parts moving through the space? 
And now the core, let's have the central body lead and then let the limbs, the peripheral body, trail after. And how is that a different experience? How does that change your um, organization and your muscular support, your breath support as we initiate with the central body? And now let's alternate one action being led with a peripheral body part and the next being led with a central body part. Peripheral body part and central body part. Maybe a foot and then maybe the hip and then the hand and now the chest continue to explore which parts of the peripheral body do you like to initiate with? Do you like to lead your actions with peripheral body parts? Is that part of your familiar vocabulary? Is that part of your creative voice or your movement signature? To create a successive flow by activating fingertips or toes even even the knee, right, a mid limb, but not part of our central body, part of our limbs leading. And now the central body again, focusing and, and noticing what's familiar with this central body leading and what you like about the central body leading. How does it uh, evoke different imagery than peripheral body leading? then articulating either of these concepts in your decision making, peripheral part leading, central part leading, peripheral body action, central body action. So there's a real sense of, of response within the body responding and reacting to impulses within the body, initiations. And then come back to center. So a similar concept with um, these part leadings is the idea that we often move and lead with our center of gravity particularly in modern dance and contemporary dance forms, but also the tombe in a ballet, the sense of easy shifting of the center of gravity to fall. And it's not a big fall. It's not going to collapse onto the ground, but we're shifting our center of gravity beyond our support, and then it leads into an action. So it might lead into a turn, or it might lead into a... Uh, a collapse or a flexion. It might lead into traveling. That's a very common one. I might lead into a uh, spring, <laughs> leading and shifting that center of gravity. So, and I can delay that fall, that minor fall, and extend that a long time before I have to take my first step. I can shift it forward and fall or shift it back and fall side or side a traditional humphrey fall right has that center of gravity counterbalancing away now that's more of a traditional full fall uh, but there is this um shifting of the center of gravity that starts to create a real lusciousness and can be a key technique component in many genres of dance. Lastly, in this exploration, I'd like to talk about surfaces. So we have our hands and the back of the hand, we imagine that that's where the sun shines on the back of the hand. And then the palm is the dark 
closed, if I close my hands in the fist, then the palm is dark and protected from the sun. So the backs of the hands can lead and the backs of the arms can lead and guide an action. And when we lead and guide with the back of the arm, there's a sense of uh, pressing through the space. There's uh, an increased, often energetic quality of leading and guiding with this aspect of the arm. And it can feel uh, very energized and in some ways grand because we're leading with this back back space and it creates an opening in the front space. Now let's switch it and lead with the palm, lead with the underside of the arm, the underside, the soft, the soft, dark, protected, vulnerable space. And here we, we feel a very dramatic shift often in our emotional story when we lead with the underside with our with our vulnerability and you can explore this in a very simple way if you gesture to the front and now you lead with the outer arm the outer surface how does that feel and now lead with the inner surface and you'll notice a lot has to change to organize the intention of guiding movement with the outer or guiding movement with the inner aspect of the arm. This is also true for our legs and specifically we can guide with the outside or top of the foot or the sole of the foot. And it creates a very different degree of sensitivity and activation in the muscles. So to review, we have our peripheral body reaching and leading through the space, our limbs, our peripheral body. And then we have our central body, our torso, and our torso can lead movement. Our torso can be the primary actor. And then we have our center of gravity and its ability to shift off of the support and create a minor fall, a subtle fall, a tombe. And then we have these aspects of the, of the limbs that guide our movement and create uh, innervation of of the entire limb as we are gesturing through the space, as we are moving through the space. And that can create very dynamic, enlivened uh, movement choices. Thank you so much for being with me here today, and I look forward to next time.